Fuck you and fuck Joe Biden and every single neoliberal and every single progressive who's bent the knee. They are all on the same team at the end of the day. What is it going to take for you to wake up? Enough with this bullshit that Donald Trump is the worst president in modern history. No, he's not. Do you even remember George Bush? Were you even there? Do you remember Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney? Do you not remember this is Hall of Fame of war criminals? And Joe Biden was working with them. When George Bush signed the authorization for war to go to a war in Iraq, Biden was standing behind him. Biden was the chair on the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. He didn't just vote for the Iraq war. He orchestrated it. Why is Poppy so angry? Now, don't be put off by his anger and by the fact that he's looking right at you and telling you to fuck yourself. I think he understands that we've all been the victims of propaganda. Perhaps his frustration is boiling over because he doesn't see any way to escape the horrible situation we're all in right now. There is no one who is as outraged as they should be about this bill uh, uh, in the progressive media besides me. No one. I've seen people describe this vote on this bill, uh, the, the, the CARES Act that screws America for a generation. I've seen the most uh, lefty uh, progressive news shows describe it as a bad vote. Bernie Sanders tweeted this out, and this is what's annoying me. Stuff like this, I just, my stomach turns. He says $33.4 billion. That's how much the wealth of Jeff Bezos and six other billionaires increased last week while millions of Americans were filing for unemployment. Our society cannot sustain itself when so few have so much while so many have so little. And he tweeted that out on April 15th. So I retweeted and said, well, then why did you just vote to give those same people $4.2 trillion while getting nothing in return for workers and families but crumbs? Because you, as always, bent your knee to the party and abandoned your movement when you had real power to do something. And there's no excuse for that. So let's for a moment just take that at face value. There's no excuse for that. Be that as it may, if we have an army of people who are willing to come up behind Bernie and others like him, up behind AOC and the squad and others who have true progressive intentions, but who lack the wherewithal and the power to stand up strongly against the DNC corruption, the oligarchic corruption, what more can we do to alleviate the frustration of Jimmy Dore and Poppy Chuleman and others who are just beside themselves now because we don't know if there's any way to defeat the oligarchy. Keaton Weiss of Do Dissidents urges us don't obsess about the vote, just build independent left power. I don't think Keaton is saying that voting doesn't matter. He isn't because I've read this article. But he is saying that there are a lot of other things that matter at least as much. Remember, the very act of voting itself makes up a remarkably small percentage of what it actually means to be politically engaged. Voting takes a few minutes if the lines are short, a few hours if the lines are long, or maybe a trip to the post office if you're voting by mail. That's what I did yesterday. Being an active citizen requires much more effort than that, as most of you already know. Therefore, it should be obvious that the task ahead of us is much bigger than simply deciding whether or not to vote or who to vote for in the fall. We now must turn our focus toward building independent populist left power, regardless of how you or anyone else decides to vote this cycle. We're seeing huge momentum behind the Dem exit movement and third party fundraising. We're seeing a sizable organizing effort behind a new political party altogether. We're seeing calls for a general strike amid the coronavirus pandemic. We're seeing underpaid workers suddenly deemed essential beginning to recognize and assert their power in a way they had never before thought possible. All of this is positive and the challenge of the moment is to coordinate these efforts in a way that creates an institutional structure that can wield power and influence, ideally as an electoral force, but at the very least in the short term as a giant pressure group to be exerted on existing organizations. Of course, as these options are being explored, our favorite politicians like AOC, Ilhan Omar, and Bernie himself are going to spend the lion's share of their time trying to sheepdog the progressive movement into the Democratic Party in order to defeat Donald Trump in November. 
This was to be expected from the outset in the event of a Sanders defeat, and so it should come as neither a shock to our system nor a distraction from our overall goal. I'll resist the temptation here to tell again and again and again why we can't vote for Joe Biden. I'll save that for other episodes. The point of today's show is to talk about a more radical type of canvassing that may help alleviate the frustrations of some of the pundits who just don't know a good path forward or who may suspect that the path they're advocating isn't actually going to get enough traction to do anything. I wrote this piece this morning. We need a more radical type of canvassing. Point number one, old people vote in primaries for corporatists. Old people who watch corporate news choose our politicians slash judges, local, state, and national, and other representatives slash servants. Old people choose corporate-sponsored public servants because the TV tells them to. These corporate-sponsored public servants, who don't actually serve anybody, not only harm the old people who vote for them, they want to take your Social Security! They also harm young people and lower-income workers. Point number two, these are the categories of old voters. Frightened black and brown moms and grandmas, especially in the South, who are afraid because the police state locks their babies up if they don't simply murder them, are told by both corporate news and by their church pastors and other black leaders to vote for corporate Democrats because the black leaders are being paid to do so and or because they trust corporate media. Comfortable old suburban, urban, rural Democrats and Republicans, multiracial, vote for whomever their favorite pundits on TV tell them. Now here's a word to the old people who watch my show. I'm not talking to you if you're watching my show. You already get it. So don't get mad at me for criticizing baby boomers. I'm a baby boomer too, so just chill. Unindoctrinated old people of every race, neighborhood type, and socioeconomic stratum, a distinct minority of unindoctrinated old people, may consume content from independent non-corporate sources on YouTube and other platforms and are not the problem this article seeks to address. But, dear viewers and listeners, you can be part of the solution. Point number three, young people do not vote in primary elections. We can talk all we want to about how to change that, but the fact remains, young people do not vote in primary elections. Younger voters, urban, suburban, and rural, who understand that current politicians are not doing anything for them and are thus disaffected, do not vote in primary elections. Younger voters do attend rallies and even protests. Younger voters typically get their political information from sources other than legacy corporate media, but still consume corporate propaganda in the form of corporate radio, television, movies, and so forth. Point number four, pissed, depressed, desperate, lower income workers need non-corporate political legal representation. Multiracial lower income workers need to form a coalition with all other younger people for the purpose of getting better political legal representation. Multiracial lower income workers need ways other than voting, which they inherently mistrust, to ensure that non-corporate candidates get into office. And it wouldn't hurt if they also could develop a distrust of corporate media in all of its insidious forms. I'm always talking to my college students about that. Multiracial lower income workers must form, join labor unions and elect labor leaders that represent the needs of workers instead of the needs of corporations. My own union, Appscuff, is shady as fuck because its leaders are in bed with the managerial staff of the state system of higher education in Pennsylvania. Joining that sort of labor union may be of limited value until we can figure out how to hijack and remove from power our current labor leaders. Now here is the last whereas point before we jump to our stunning and thrilling conclusion. Point five, we need a new type of canvassing. Instead of canvassing designed to recruit voters who typically fail to show up to vote in primary elections, we need a new type of canvassing designed to educate, inform, propagandize disenfranchised voters and then persuade them to have difficult conversations with the old people who actually vote in primary elections. Instead of focusing on door knocking, texts, phone calls, and the like, which are the staple of traditional canvassing efforts, we need the educational, informational, propagandizing efforts we engage in to be focused on Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, 
Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, etc. We need to start campaigns on those platforms designed to provide a clearinghouse for progressive candidates. Now, informed younger students, workers, already are able to tell the difference pretty well between corporate and progressive candidates, but we need to help them further. But then we must make them willing to have difficult but necessary deprogramming type conversations with their elders. The larger of the two jobs isn't necessarily informing the younger voters, but urging them to have difficult deprogramming type conversations with their elders. I don't know how much traditional canvassing you've done, but in the canvassing I've done, I've seen that the boomer type voters are very recalcitrant. They're stubbornly resistant to any idea that their minds might change from what they see on television. The research of Ryan Grimm shows that person by person canvassing is much more effective with people who actually know each other. So the kind of canvassing that will actually change things is with people who know each other talking to other people who get most of their information from corporate media. In short, we need the unindoctrinated to unbrainwash the indoctrinated. I've already stolen the thunder on my conclusion. Good people don't let their parents vote for corporate politicians. Frightened, selfish boomers must be persuaded to change their ways. There must be an organized campaign to help them understand that they are harming future generations with their ill-informed, if not malicious, choices. They need to be told in no uncertain terms that they must do much better by future generations than they have been doing over the past 40 years or so. We need to be able to identify and then eradicate from office future politicians who in any way resemble Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, Bill Clinton, or Barack Obama. In short, we need everyone to understand what neoliberalism is and how it is destroying our planet and its people. Before corporations are allowed to completely infiltrate and control all social media platforms, the window of democracy is closing as we speak, we need to help younger people resist the ravages of corporate information control. Manufactured consent by our society's owners must be combated. The answer is to locate the network of determined, independent media outlets and share the fuck out of their content. These outlets are constantly vetting each other and are happy to engage in conversations about where the unpurchased truth may be found. These outlets also are happy to tell you who the corporate sellouts are. Cough, Jenk, Uger. It probably is enough if younger people find accurate information and insist that their parents heed it. A bonus, however, is if old people figure out that they've been ingesting corporate Kool-Aid for their entire lives and decide instead to pop the red pill of independent information sources for themselves. As you get started on this quest, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, which you're watching now, and other articles on Medium. Also feel free to ask questions on Facebook and Twitter. Again, let me say to the baby boomers watching this show, I'm not talking to you. You're the part of the minority that we don't need to unbrainwash. So your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to join the younger people in getting the word out to the rest of the boomers who don't get it yet. And of course, any conversations you have with recalcitrant boomers on your own are also probably helpful. Let's keep up this good fight as we battle the indoctrination of our friends and neighbors going forward.